For this lesson, we'll discuss how to render volumetric effects like environment fog using the GPU in V-Ray Next, so that you can add additional depth and realism to your scenes while harnessing the power of GPU rendering. First, let's open the Asset Editor to make sure we're on GPU, and I've also already got the denoiser on, so let's start an interactive render to get a sense of the scene. As you can see, we get a nice and quick preview of our daylight scene here with a house and trees. Now, let's see how we can use the fog on GPU to change the mood and enhance our scene here. To add the fog, we can expand the right-hand flyout menu, and in the volumetric environment settings, you'll see we have two types, aerial perspective and environment fog. Both types can be used to simulate fog, dust, smoke, or other tiny particles floating in the atmosphere. The environment fog is more powerful and capable of producing volumetric shadows. Meanwhile, the aerial perspective calculates faster, but is more limited in its application. Let's switch to the environment fog. Now, right away you'll see the scene turns dark because the fog distance parameter is too small. The distance parameter controls the density of the fog. If the distance is increased, the fog will be thinner and we'll be able to see objects which are further away from the camera. If the distance is reduced, the fog will be thicker and objects further away in the scene will not be visible. To make the effect more clear, Let's draw a render region, and then I'm going to increase the distance. Let's try 3000. And you'll see immediately, the scene becomes much more visible. Now let's try 7000. And again, observe how the scene is more visible, because the fog becomes more transparent with larger values. We can also increase the height of the fog, since you may have noticed that right now, the fog does not cover the entire scene. Let's try something like 3000. The height controls the real height of the fog in the scene. And as you'll see, the fog has become thicker again. This is because the fog appears more dense at the ground level and fades as it reaches the maximum height. If we compare these three render regions, the fog on the left is too thick and also fading too close to the ground. In the middle, the distance is okay, allowing us to see enough, but the height is still too small. On the right, the increased height makes the fog cover the whole scene appropriately, but overall it's too dark. If we disable the render region, Again, you'll see that the fog is obviously still too thick, and we are not able to see a lot. One way to fix this would be to allow for global illumination to scatter in the fog and add more brightness to the scene. Let's draw another render region, and this time, enable the Scatter GI option to add global illumination. Note that whichever algorithm in your V-Ray settings you choose, for example, Light Cache, will be used to accelerate the GI inside the volume. Now you'll see as this clears up, that the scene is noticeably brighter, although it's still quite foggy. Let's draw another render region, and this time, try setting the scatter bounces to 100. As that loads, you'll see that this increases the brightness of the light in the fog even more. Note that as the scatter bounces are increased, this option becomes more intensive to calculate, but it can also significantly improve the realism of your images. Now comparing the three, you can see that without the GI scattering on, the fog looks a little bit fake. With the scatter bounces on, the higher the number of bounces, the more precise and bright the result will be. Okay, let's stop the render now and move on to discuss a few other parameters. Starting a new render again, let's draw another render region and then experiment with tinting the fog different colors using the color swatch parameter. For example, if we want to simulate dust, we can change the color to a bright yellow. Experimenting with different colors is one way to create a variety of different moods in your scenes. All right, I'm going to disable the render region again, and now let's head over to the Lights tab to see how we can achieve a nice dusk lighting scenario. First, let's disable the sunlight, and then turn on the artificial lights here like the garden light and V-Ray IES light. Now, without the sun warming up the scene, we're able to achieve a nice dusk mood. We can also switch over to the Atmosphere Render element, where you can see an isolated preview of how the artificial lights are contributing to the fog and scattering some within it, giving the scene an additional sense of depth and realism. All right, I'm liking how this is looking, so let's prepare to do a final render. Back in the Settings tab, let's toggle off interactive rendering so that we can do a production render using buckets on GPU. Now let's start the render. Okay, now looking at our final image here, you'll see that the fog has lessened some of the contrast in our image. 
we can easily fix this right in the V-Ray frame buffer by using V-Ray's built-in correction controls. For example, let's toggle on the exposure setting and then increase the contrast and exposure a bit. Now, you'll see that the trees in the far background on the right have faded more into the fog to create realistic looking silhouettes. In addition, the volumetric light coming from the lamp in the garden there and elsewhere is scattering more softly, creating a nice atmosphere. All right, now you've seen how with V-Ray Next's support for GPU rendering of volumetric effects like the environment fog, it's possible to get quick interactive previews and incredibly realistic looking production images at faster speeds than ever before.